I've had psychologists be like, oh, because the breakup with his dad and some things that happen. Oh, he doesn't have a neurological issue. He has trauma. Mm. I'm like, so he got diagnosed in third grade, but then it went away and now it's just from trauma. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No, no, I know my child. I know my child better than you. I don't care if you have the degree. Mm. It, this is not trauma related. I'm just giving myself a lot of grace. There's a lot of grace as a parent in general that you really have to give yourself. Um, my custody arrangement is that they go spend two months in the summer with their dad. So I really push myself to, you know, the end of the school year. And I'm like, okay, I can fall apart in June. <laughs> I'm gonna schedule my meltdown. <laughs> schedule no, meltdowns. I, yeah. <laughs> Autism, Beyond the Diagnosis, Part 5. And we have a special guest with us today. Today's guest made a bold move by leaving her successful 15-year career in business and marketing to pursue her true passion in the beauty industry. She became a licensed aesthetics instructor and professional makeup artist, and since then has been has had a re rewarding career in makeup, which includes film credits, production, and industry accolades. But her biggest accomplishment and achievement in her life are the three incredible humans that call her mom. <laughs> Everyone, welcome, Wendy Yvonne. How are you doing yeah. this evening, Wendy? I'm great. I'm great. Good, good. day. Oh, yeah. Good, good. I'm glad that you took some time off for, to, uh, from your day to address this topic. Um, there's so many questions. Uh, of course, you know, I, I have three boys with autism. Well, two of them with autism. We just found out our nine-year-old has ADHD. So that's been um, somewhat of a struggle, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, you may be able to help me in this, in this episode. I mean, I don't have all the answers. So, uh, you know, it's a learning process, definitely, because every child is so different, no matter you know what they're dealing with so yeah for sure uh can you share your journey of discovering your child's autism diagnosis yeah um i don't know if you can hear my dog she loves to play basketball and right. she got a hold of the basketball right now i'm like trying to find one of my children <laughs> um, anyways i have so i have three amazing wonderful children i have a 22 year old um daughter who's living her best life in Seattle, just super proud of her. My 15 year old son, he just turned 15 on August, October 5th. So he is the one that has uh, the autism diagnosis. And then I have a 12 year old daughter. So we, uh, I knew right away, like when he was younger, um, one, you know, when he was trying to communicate, try to talk, like he would get really worked up. Um, but by one, he had his own language. He was like, he would have a whole gibberish conversation with you and he knew what he was saying. Um, and you just had to go with it. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I get it. Like, I totally understand. Um, so, you know, there was all these little things, you know, the way he lined up his cars, um, just little things as he was growing um, that I was noticing and that we were struggling with and communication was a huge one because he didn't have his language down um, he would get really frustrated when he would try to express himself and it would turn into big tantrums and we'd have to calm down um, but once he got into school it was definitely the teachers were like hey there's something neurological going on here yeah. you know and I was like yeah like I was waiting for somebody to be like, he's just not difficult. You know, he's not just a difficult child. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was about third grade. He's in a ninth grade now. Yeah. So it's, it's been a process. It took about a year of um, assessments and things like that to even after the initial teacher saying, Hey, let's address something. Um, it took like a good year, year and a half to even get through the assessments and the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. unfortunately in the process of doing that I mean fortunately because I'm glad to be back in California mm -hmm. I did relocate back to California and um just having to we had to go back through the whole process again recently um because of just the way the health insurance is set up the way that um you know the school what the school needs and all of that so wow. uh, we even recently just went through and 
and that took two years. So it's something I've been dealing with for a very long time, but learning a lot um, and really, um, really understanding what, what he's dealing with too. Mm -hmm. Um, So. Wow. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that transition. How, how did that work for you? So with, when it comes to uh, with special needs and stuff like that, so every state is, is, is different. Like what was that transition like for you? Um, because we had just got it started um, right before I left. Um, it was one of those um, where I had to take like, okay, I got the assessment from a different state, had to take it to a doctor here and be like, this is what they said. This is what they're recommending. Um, Can we please get the additional assessments and things like that, that they're recommending. Um, And that process, like it just lagged on and I had to switch doctors. Like it really took a lot of advocating to be like, Hey, like I want to get this addressed because I need him. I want him to be a successful Yes. You know, individual. And I don't want him to feel like he's constantly fighting himself. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah, that, that was the hardest transition is just because the doctors and, it, you know, the doctors want to make sure that, you know, the insurance companies for that state, all the dot, you know, I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause they don't want to pay out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. That's a challenge. Oh my. Yeah, that's a whole nother. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's an yeah. individual show by itself. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. A little yeah. bit. <laughs> uh, how has your perspective on autism and parenting evolved over time? Considering that he's, he's 15 now. Um, just really when the more you more I've had to advocate for my son and I'm, I'm a single mom. I've, uh, I've, gosh, I think he was like three or four when, um, his dad and I separated. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it was really hard to kind of, okay. I, he's, he was a lot of work. Even my oldest daughter would be like, he's your favorite. And I'm like, no, he just is a lot more work. (laughs) You really learn patience because you have to slow down and you have to allow them to, to, you've got to figure out how they communicate. And as they age, their communication changes, you know, when they're little and they can't say sentences yet, they're still trying to communicate to you in their own way. And so it's really taking that time to just kind of, okay, what is he trying to say to me? Um, What is he trying to do? So up until he could have an actual conversation, he, it was a lot of like, okay, breathing exercises, focus, okay, calm down. Let's try to figure this out together because I don't need the cops called on me again. (laughs) Yeah. Doing a tantrum. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I get it because sometimes, you know, you can be in public um, and and they might have an outburst or, I mean, like the other day or Monday, I think uh, Monday, I took a day off work because my wife had to work in the field. So I had all three of my kids here, you know, and they were out of school so I had to take one of my boys to a doctor's appointment. The other one got sick. He started throwing up everywhere. <laughs> and so my youngest one, who's not verbal, was at the doctor's appointment. He's like screaming. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like, uh, you know, trying to get him to calm down. And and, and eventually he did. But because he, he's somewhat still nonverbal. So he yeah. have tantrum sometimes trying to say what he you know, what he's trying to think. So I it can be so challenging at times. Yes. Yes. I, I, I have a lot of grace for, for parents now. <laughs> I, you know, I definitely, you know, for me, it was just like, Oh, it's just how my kid is. At first it was like, this is just how he is. But then, you know, you start to question when things are a little, when he's trying to put strawberries back together, cause he's mad that you cut them up. <laughs> like, like um, but it really did take slowing down and, and being willing to un- understand him at all of the different stages and ages, because, you know, yeah, when they are nonverbal, there's so many tantrums. There's so many things that you're just like, I just want to walk away. Like I just yes. want to over here <laughs> and I'm going to yeah. go over there. <laughs> yeah, really? How, so what is the journey like for you being uh, a, a single mom, three kids, uh, how does the the oldest and the youngest, how, how do you all, 
work together like as a family? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, my oldest daughter, she lives in Seattle. She graduated um, college early, got a, she's a software engineer in the Seattle area. Wow. Um, just killing it. So <laughs> proud of her. Um, but she's an amazing big sister. Like she really has taken the time to, you know, there's times that he doesn't feel like he can communicate with me or I might not understand. And he'll talk to her and then she'll share what she feels like needs to be shared with me. Um, and so as a family, you know, we really came come together and offer him the support he needs. She helps him stay on top of his homework. Um, she helps me help him, you know, follow his grades, um, things like that. So, um, you know, I, I'm located in Southern California. She's in Seattle. So it's a lot of, you know, Zoom calls. Um, he loves to play video games and, and programming, you know, so they, they connect on that and she really helps to encourage him um, in, in that. And so it's really, I'm, I'm so lucky to have, you know, the children that I have, they're just amazing humans. And so, um, I'm thankful for that because it, you, you need a community, you know, you've got his counselors, you've got his teachers, you've got all the other advocates trying to make sure that, Hey, we want to make sure that you're, you know, you're successful. Yes. 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 I yes. like, I tell him like, I can't be your emotional support human for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. The, I don't know if you've seen part one of our series, but there's a lady I interviewed. Her name is uh, Joanna Horsefall. She's in Southern California as well. She has a, a company, I think it's called ABA Your Way or something like that, but mm-hmm. she's in, in, in the California area too. So yeah. 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 It's, it, yeah, it's finding that community. I have moms, um, like my daughter's, my younger daughter, she's 12, she's super social. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's times that moms will, <laughs> that was her throwing stuff at me. <laughs> um, they'll ask me questions because they, they will sometimes see my son. He, he usually sticks to himself, but when he is around, um, you know, they'll, we'll start the conversation. And so there's moms that I've actually been able to help guide and, and kind of direct them in the right direction to be like, Hey, check this out or go to check out that resource. You know, this is what you need to do because it, it can be daunting and, you know, it can be frustrating when you've got, I mean, I've gone to doctor's appointments and they'd be like, okay, come next week and we'll, we'll move forward on something. And so I come next week and I'm there and they're like, why are you here? And I'm like, cause you told me to come back. Like, <laughs> and it was just like, are you kidding me? You know, and you get so frustrated and discouraged sometimes, but you're just like, no, in the end, you've just got to keep fighting because you're the only one that can do it for them. Yeah. Understood. Understood. Yeah. How, uh, what self-care strategies have been most effective for you as a parent? Hmm. Uh, being okay with, or just giving myself a lot of grace. There's a lot of grace as a parent in general that you really have to give yourself. Um, my custody arrangement is that they go spend two months in the summer with their dad. So I really push myself to, you know, the end of the school year and I'm like, okay, I can fall apart in June. <laughs> I'm going to schedule my meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do I'll, every summer you know when I have that time to myself I'm like okay what can I do for me to get back all that energy that I have to you know put forth you know throughout the school year um, and just what can I do to to take care of myself you know I still of course while they're here take the time they're old enough that I can leave them alone for a couple hours and yeah nobody's gonna get hurt yeah um, so, but yeah so what what are what are some things that if you don't mind sharing like what do you do for yourself when you have that time do you get massages do you like what are some things that you enjoy uh, doing massages personally? are always a great idea <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like definitely massages sometimes it's even just like focusing on my own therapy mm. and you know because sometimes especially you know as a parent but as a single parent yeah. there's a, a stoic face that you really have to put on a lot of times and and push through moments that you are just exhausted 
um, because they are, you're all they have. And so sometimes it's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to hit my therapist up and we're going to talk yeah. <laughs> we're gonna work through this because, and I've done that. I've, I've, I've really focused on my own mental health at times when, when I've had that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, yeah. it's needed. Um, to get that break, I know, you know, I know you love your kids, but I mean, that's that's a beautiful thing to get that, you know, that yeah. amount of a break. I think the first time they like went to their dads for Christmas, yeah, they were like, we're so sorry, mom. I'm like, actually, that was like the best Christmas present ever. <laughs> a clean house, <laughs> a quiet, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's good. It's okay. Oh, that's a, that's a, 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 a beautiful uh, Christmas, right? For you, right? A clean yeah. house. <laughs> if you have any questions for our guests, for Wendy, please feel free to comment. Uh, we're accepting questions right now. So feel free to drop something in the comments below if you have any questions. Um, I was my uh, we have a, a blended family and our uh, our nine year old because uh, we have four kids total. But my daughter is 21 and she she's on her own in Arizona. But our nine-year-old, uh, you know, we had a blended family and then my wife and I, we have two together and those are the two with autism. And so I remember one day I was, uh, you know, dropping my bonus son off to to his dad for the holidays and I dropped him off and I was so happy. I said, okay, I got a little time on myself and now I got my other two boys and I'm thinking, ah, now I'm going to drop them off. But I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm the father. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I thought I had somebody to drop them, drop them off too. You know, I was just like, oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, what was I about to say? Oh, parents, grandparents, I'm like, I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm all yeah. for it. Now, you 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 spoke about um, relationship status, uh, and I was going to ask, like, what does dating? for you look like or are you actively dating especially with having a, a child with autism how does that work for you um well I am in a relationship so okay. I'm oh, okay. Cool. okay yeah um okay. but um before I met my now wonderful boyfriend yeah um I it was hard it was hard because you get people that don't understand I had guys that would be like oh you know you're I don't know, just always critiquing my parenting. Like you don't understand, like he's high functioning. So my son is ASD one. He has ADHD as well and a general anxiety disorder. So there's a lot that I deal with overall. And, um, you know, it was a lot of like criticizing me about my parenting, especially a female parenting of male, you know, um, he's going to be this way, he's going to be that way. And I was just like, I know as a mom in general, there's only so much I can teach a son. Yes. And so I really lined him up with, you know, a, a male counselors. They're, they're part of um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of LA. Um, and I'm actually, I love that program because it puts these positive role models in their lives. And I really, for a long time, I, I wasn't dating or if I was dating, they never met my kids because I was like, I'm not even going to sit like get them involved in like in, in any of that until I know that they're ready and willing and, um, super, super thankful that I met, um, my boyfriend now, because he actually has a seven-year-old who, um, has some neurodivergence Mm -hmm. that, um, he's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Like I get it. I understand it. And I've been around his son and, and I know how to hand, you know, I know how to Mm -hmm manage that and we have a great time and <laughs> so yeah. awesome. um so that's it's really kind of was serendipitous I guess <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> that, you know we were able to just understand each other and understand what as parents we deal with um mm-hmm. with our neurospicy children so <laughs> <laughs> that's cool so so how do you and in in your your boyfriend how do you and him find time to connect mm-hmm. considering both of your situation is how, how do you, both of you have time to connect? Um, we, we, it's, we don't get to see each other a lot. He travels for work a lot. He, okay. uh, and then, you know, just me being a mom, I have to, I always, I feel bad about leaving my kids, but now because they're old enough, I'm like, okay, I don't feel so 
guilty about it anymore. They're old enough. Nothing, you know, my old, my neighbor one time told me if your child's can down the 911, they're old enough to stay home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> but, um, but you know, now it's, it's just kind of, we you just really have to be a little more, um, just planning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of, yeah. And then just being willing to work with each other's schedule and Hey, like, like he was able to come over for a few hours today just to hang out. And, yeah. and, you know, I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm good with that. Like just to be able to, to have that because yeah. And his, his son, um, he, his son actually lives a few hours away, but like he's come and hung, hang out with us and um, got to hang out with like my family and um, kids and just, it was a good time. So, yeah. yeah. Sure. Nice. Nice. So, so how do you navigate the balance between advocating for your child's needs and encouraging their independence? Oh, that's a very great question. Um, <laughs> I, I even I asked my son, I was like, hey, I'm going to talk about this. C you know, can you give me some of your perspective and things that like have worked for, you know, that you feel like work for you and and how all like, what some advice you would give. Yeah. Um, and it's when I first when he first I, let me start over. <laughs> I struggled to. um whether or not to even tell him about his diagnosis mm. early on mm -hmm. um, because I didn't want him to use that an, as an excuse as to why he couldn't do something Yes, I'm and, sorry. and why he wasn't willing to try. Yeah. And it was probably only about four years ago that mm -hmm. maybe three years ago that he actually found out his diagnosis and um so that makes him like 12. Yeah. He's right about 12. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, but I, I talked, I, you know, I had to talk to him about, it. I'm like, I, I didn't know if I should tell you because I don't ever want to hear, I can't do it mom because of this. Yes. I'm not going to try because of that, you know? And, um, he was thankful that I told him because it helped him to not feel like there's something wrong with him. Right. When they don't, when there's something going and they're like, why I'm trying, I'm trying and nothing's working. Mm -hmm. um, they start to get even more frustrated. And so that's about the time I start to, started to have him advocate for himself too. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, this is what we're dealing with. This is why you struggle in these areas. I let him read the whole, the whole assessment. Um, and we talked about it and I was like, okay, but you have to understand when you're at school, you have to speak up. Yeah. Like you have a 504 or you have, you know, you need to speak up because I can't be there to do that for you. Um, I can, you know, yell at the doctors. I can get into it with whoever on the phone, yeah. but I can't go sit in the classroom with you. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's been a process. We had some years where he struggled with school a lot, mm -hmm. um, but it also had a lot to do with the teachers as well. And it's yeah. really making sure that you're having those one-on-ones with the teachers and the counselors at the school and just being like, Hey, like, this is what he needs. This is what, you know, and, and really making him involved in that yeah. and saying, Hey, what's going to work for you. Um, and then holding him to it and, if, and letting him know though, like, Hey, that might change. It might need to change, but be okay with that. And um, he's really done. He's done really well this year. I was super proud of him because he got signed up for like the Spanish one. And he was like, mom, this is too easy. <laughs> I was like, okay. You know, and, um, one day he, uh, he had to stay after school, but he didn't like tell me why. And the next day his teacher calls me. She's like, so he wanted to, you know, be in a harder, more challenging class. And so he did an assessment and he came to me, but I was like, Oh, like he came to you without talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yay, you know, yay. But why didn't you tell me my feelings are hurt? <laughs> Uh, but no, it was one of those moments I was just super proud of him because I was like, okay, yeah. understanding advocacy, you're understanding that you need to speak up. Mm, yeah, I love it. Yeah, because I think I think a lot of parents who who have kids with autism worry about that, especially when it comes to school. Yeah. You know, will they be able to advocate for themselves? So 
Um, yeah, it's having a lot of just, I mean, it wasn't something that happened overnight, you know, yeah, um, sure. but it's really every time you have a situation where you can teach them that, hey, all you needed to do or all you need to do is say this or do that yeah. um, and really kind of walking them through it. But yeah, you know. for sure. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a victory right there. Yeah. 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 There's, I always, we always celebrate the little victories. I, right. you know, I just, he started um, two years ago, started taking the public transportation to, to school. Um, and that was like a two week process where I was getting phone calls because he was lost in there somewhere in the middle of Glendale. <laughs> I had to turn around on my way to work because he was having an anxiety attack and didn't know what to do. Yeah. Um, you know, but I just, I had to, I didn't have, you know, I couldn't get mad about him. For sure. Yeah. yeah, it was it's frustrating to have to leave work or you know be late to work and get in trouble at work. But I'm like, hey, I have a child that I I'm working with, and that's more important to me. Um, so yeah. Yeah, once he started doing it by himself, I was like, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. And there's gonna be so many more victories, you know, it's just yeah. one day at a time. You know? Oh, for sure. And just again, it's giving yourself grace being patient with them and just knowing and understanding that it just, it's going to take time um, in certain areas of their life. Everybody's a little bit different, but yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, we, we have in our head a, a certain image, the way we want things to play out, mm -hmm. you know, and then when it doesn't look the way we want it to, you know, that's when. Yeah. You gotta have the faith and the patience and, you know, and to know that things can work out. So. Yeah. I mean, there was times he's like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to try. I'm like, nope, we got this. Let's do it again. Let's try again. Do you want me to ride the bus with you? Like, <laughs> how are we going to do this? What do you need? You know? So um, it does, it does take a lot of coaching. It does take a lot of, you know, there's times I feel like my youngest daughter's, she's literally been like, hopes that something's wrong with her. So she can <laughs> a little more attention. <laughs> like no be okay with being okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh that's interesting because sometimes I, I i struggle with trying to balance everybody getting the attention that they need yeah you know um our, we have a four-year-old nine-year-old five-year-old and it can it can be overwhelming on top of you know work and and mm -hmm. you know so i yeah i get it yeah, it's yeah, it's just really listening. It, again, it's a full time job as a parent, but it's it's like two full time jobs when you're dealing with a child on the spectrum, for sure. Yes, for yeah. sure. Uh, what advice do you have for parents who feel overwhelmed by the demands of advocating for their child? Don't give up. I mean, there's times like. Like I said, those times I've gone to the doctor and they're like, why are you here? And I'm like, you told me to come back. Like, I, I thought we were going to take care of something today. We're going to move forward. Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of times the insurance companies or the co doctors just don't, you'll get parent. I always worried about them looking at me like I wanted something wrong to be wrong with my child. Mm -hmm. That was always something in the back of my mind. Am I acting like I want something wrong with my child I don't want them trying to like lock me up thinking that you know? right, yeah, for sure. so there was a lot of that so of of really kind of weighing um in the back of my mind and, and it's hard because you you don't you want to fight for them and you need to fight for them because they can't yes. um but you just have to just be okay with you know the doctor's giving your hard time or looking at you funnier I've had psychologists be like oh because the breakup with his dad and some things that happened oh he doesn't have a neurological issue he has trauma mm. I'm like so he got diagnosed in third grade but then it went away and now it's just from trauma <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. no no I know my child I know my child better than you. I don't care if you have the degree. Mm -hmm. it, this is not trauma related. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. Yeah, because we went through a lot. I mean, like you say, with the insurance, mm -hmm. um, and we was able to get everything lined up. But that process, um, and and uh, to be honest, like I struggle with accepting like 
you know, especially like with my five year old, yeah. uh, that he had autism. I struggled with that for a while. Um, so in the midst of it, it was just like my wife was just insurance. She's just yeah going to just you know just staying at it because she she works with kids with autism. So she automatically knew in the infancy stages like yeah. we need to go get him you know evaluated. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I struggle with that, but now it's like <laughs> I'm fully. I'm, I'm on board now. Like I've accepted it. And we look at it like a superpower. Like, yeah. you know, it, we, it, it's made life fun. It's made life interesting. Yeah. It wasn't always easy, yeah. but we'll be in the car together and he'll start doing something and I'll join in. Cause I've got my own neuro spiciness going <laughs> <laughs> and he'll just look at me and be like, mom, I think you're autistic too. You know, like, <laughs> so we, we, I've never, never let it be an excuse to why he couldn't try. I never um, made it seem like a bad thing. Yeah. Um, I just really focused on his strengths. What are the, what are the things that he is really strong in? Like at seven years old, he wanted to learn German. I was like, okay, we're learning German, uh, you know, yeah. like, wow. let's do this, yeah. um, you know, and it didn't, it lasted a couple of years, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but, hey, yeah. These are the things that he's this is how he's expressing himself. And so hey, let's work within those those confines of his understanding. Um, because again, you know, children in general, we all they all everybody, all humans express themselves so differently, but children as they're learning, you know, if they're constantly told to be something that they're inherently not, yeah. they're never gonna be comfortable in who they are as an individual. That's right. So, uh, yeah. Mm. so yeah so when they're when they're you know add the neural spicy onto it um it's just it's focusing on their strengths and really and giving them that and feeding those mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. my son he he's very big into like geography and the states and cities i mean he's just he knows it all i mean he's he asked me the other day when were we moving to brazil <laughs> I don't think I'm moving to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe that's what is it. <laughs> yeah, right. If you have any questions for today's guest, feel free to uh comment and we can get those questions answered for you. I wanted to ask you real quick about do you feel that it takes men longer to accept? the diagnosis opposed to, uh, to, to the women or to moms? Um, in my experience, I would say yes. Um, there's some men that, you know, like the conversations that I've been able to have with my ex have been, or with not, sorry, (laughs) with my boyfriend (laughs) about his situation has actually been really affirming, you know, for me as a woman, because, you know, my ex doesn't quite, hasn't quite wrapped his head around it. Like his own, his own family has even approached me and said, Hey, we think there's something going on. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I got this taken care of. This is what's going on. Um, they're like, we tried to have that conversation, but he wasn't willing to listen. Um, and even the, the, the relationship that he has with his dad is, it, it's strained a little because his dad still, I don't feel has accepted it and isn't, hasn't really been willing to work on and focus on, Hey, these are what he needs. This is how he communicates. So he's not talking back. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. trying to understand what, what's going on around him. Mm-hmm. So, and I've, I've seen that a few times where it's just a little bit harder because it becomes almost like, like an, ego thing a little yeah, bit where yeah. it's like oh not my child <laughs> yeah, yeah so yeah. but I also I also studied like I originally started school in psychology so I think that helped me a lot in just understanding human nature yeah. um and so once it came to my kids just the kind of mom I am anyways I've always wanted them to to grow into their own and be comfortable in who they are and not try to like, there's something wrong with you. There's don't do this, don't do that, you know, yeah. um, which didn't always work with <laughs> that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or other people. <laughs> but at the same token, I've had other, you know, parents come to me and be like, Oh my gosh, my grandchild or my child is the same age as yours. What do you do different? Mm. 
that allows them to just be these cool kids. And it's just like, I just, I let them be themselves Yeah. within parameters. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Do you have any closing comments that any advice that you would like to give to the listeners, to the viewers, uh, especially when this is on YouTube uh, for the playback, what advice would you have for those who might have um, a child with, with autism? Uh, you know, I asked my son this because I was like, I want, I want your feedback. You know, what are some of the things that you feel like help you? And, and one of his comments was like, just being understanding and, and allowing, um, holding space for for them to communicate in the way that they know how to communicate yeah. my son will like talk for 10 minutes and I can't I can't interrupt him because then he'll start all the way back at the beginning yep. and then I have to you know <laughs> yeah. and so I have to be like okay I don't know what we're talking about yet but I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna wait till we get to you know yeah so, but it's allowing him to just talk it out because he needs that because yeah. that's how his brain works um I wanted to share something he he says because um, I absolutely love how he explains his own autism. Mm -hmm. He said it's basically he has an eight kilobyte RAM processor, so it's a low processing power. Yeah, but then he could still send you to space. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, that is a really great way to <laughs> explain it. Oh, yeah. We we have a, a a question. Uh has it been confirmed? Does it normally come from the male side or female side or both? Um I think he's probably talking about oh, that's my friend Corey. Mm -hmm. Wondering if if he's speaking in terms of uh I don't know, has it been confirmed? Does it normally come from the male side or female side or both? Uh I don't know. I've, I, I've never yeah, heard know. whether or not it came from one or the other, um, but I have heard that it is genetic. Um, so it does come from some one of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but I've never really kind of explored. Again, you have to have two parents that are willing to kind of look at themselves in the mirror and be like, did yeah. you get this for me or did it, you know? Like, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, I wrestled with that for a minute because I, I was like, is it me? Not like playing a blame game, but you wonder. Right. Like, well, there's definitely in, in learning his diagnosis and learning how to help him cope mm -hmm. and learning, reading the books and talking to the doctors. I've noticed, you know, my own neuro spiciness and I've even had, I'm, undiagnosed diagnosed ADHD um it's unofficially diagnosed only because the doctor was like you're next but <laughs> let's focus on him first yeah so I already know after like going through all of this with him really understanding that oh like my brain does the same thing um so there are things and we call it adahida that's what we call it that's, mm -hmm. I just want to throw that out there it's a new term for ADHD <laughs> yeah yeah um, but yeah, I mean, it, it comes from somewhere and, you know, yeah. whoever they got it from, oh, you know, it is, it is what it is, you know, it's, it's what you, how, yeah. how you as the parent manage it, because back in the day, a lot of people, you know, they don't want to address any of that, right? Oh, There's nothing wrong yeah. with my child. This is, you know, oh, and they didn't ever want to look at that. I mean, even when I was a kid, mm -hmm. my parents didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, I get it. Cause now that I look back when I was younger, I was like, oh, maybe yeah. I, you know, now that I'm older, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we've we've managed to get as far as we have in life. And how did we do that? And what are the things that we've learned? And how can we apply that in our own parenting and guidance of our own children? So yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for. Um, just being super mom, uh, <laughs> definitely, um, you know, we, and this is one of the reasons I, I've created this series um, to not only to bring awareness, but to help share people's stories with somebody who might, you know, be on the fence about maybe wanting to get their child, uh, you know, evaluated, 
Um, it's one of the reasons I, I created this. And then for me to learn as well, because I don't have it all figured out either. This is new to me. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, where can we find you online? All of the good stuff. Um, Wendy, Yvonne, um, that's my handle on everything. I've been around a little while, so I made sure to. <laughs> but it's Wendy, Yvonne, W-E-N-D-I. Um, so you can find me on Instagram, Wendy, Yvonne. Um, WendyYvonne.com is my website, so you can find out some more about me. Um, I've only recently started kind of sharing more and more about um, my, I guess, personal life and, and my, my journey with my son um, and just in general. Uh, so it's kind of, you don't see a lot of it yet online. You see all yeah. my makeup stuff right now. <laughs> but it's something that I've, I've really more and more as these last couple years have gone by, I've been really just passionate about and, and learning to knowing that there's a moment when I was lost mm. that hey let me whatever I can do to help you or guide you or point you because it can be overwhelming and you're like you you doubt yourself and you ask yourself as a parent so many questions like is it something that I did or am I being to this or am I being to that um, but in the end the the ultimate goal is to create into independent humans that can still adult and still be successful when we're gone, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, mm. so yeah. So yeah, just community, just knowing yeah. that there's, there's a lot of resources out there. So mm-hmm. for sure. Wow. Well, thanks for uh, this being an exclusive. I, I don't <laughs> this is maybe your, your first, your first time sharing, you know, it, it kind of it is. Yeah. I, I brought it up in an article that was written about me a couple months ago. And I had friends that I've known since my son was a baby going, I didn't know he was autistic. I was like, yeah, I guess I just, I was too busy figuring it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got you. No, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Life, life, what is it? Life be life. And sometimes I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time, Wendy. I appreciate it. Uh, you stopping by and being a guest and always feel free um, to come back. I mean, this is something that I want to continue um, just to continue to bring awareness and to help people as well. So thanks for sharing your story. Of course. Of course. Thank yeah. you for having me. <laughs> for sure. Well, thanks again, Brave Hearts community. You heard it here. Everyone, make sure you go check out the YouTube channel for the series. Um, this is part five. So uh, make sure you check out all the episodes from the uh, autism series Um, and you can check out the YouTube channel as well. Uh, Most of you know what, uh, you know, what the webs, I mean, (laughs) what the YouTube channel is about, um, especially in the area of remarriage. So this Um, is Sean Heinemann uh, with special guest Wendy Yvonne and we are out. (laughs) 